ओम नमः शिवाय We continue with Ribu's instruction to Nadaga on the nature of Vidya Mukti. Mukti means liberation. Vidya means disembodied. So the instruction is on bodiless liberation. Though the instruction is about disembodied liberation, it is quite evidently written for the living. If you consider deeply the instruction he is bestowing, on the nature of disembodied liberation, you will naturally focus on the eternal. And that which is eternal is alone real and is alone true about self-realization or liberation. We take up in chapter 9, verse 9. Ribu says, leaving aside any certainty that all is there or nothing is there and being established in I am Brahman and I am none else, such is the Vidaha Mukta. There is the idea that something is there. And there seems to be certitude regarding it. The something and the there are mere ideas. The certainty derives from something else. There is the idea something is there. And the consciousness which knows it is the actual existence. Evidently, in the disembodied state, there is no notion superimposed on the self through imagination of something is there, or all is there. What is true then is also true now. There may be the idea that nothing is there. 
such as a waking state conception of what occurs in deep dreamless sleep. The certainty does not derive from the nothing. Nothing is merely an idea. The certainty derives from the consciousness, which is the actual existence. But as long as the superimposition of what is objective upon the self is there, then the objectified portion and the certainty also are false. Evidently, In the disembodied state, there is no such conception as nothing is there. That which is true then is true even now. The Vidaha Mukta, that is, one who is liberated in a disembodied state. The Vidaha Mukta has become all, has become that which all are. But he has no such idea as all, or all are there. being of the nature of utterly non-objective being. Nothing applies to him, but he has no idea of nothing. When you do not conceive in terms of something, or nothing, what exists. He is speaking of a Vidaha Mukta. one who is absorbed in disembodied liberation. And indeed, this entire chapter of the Ribu Gita does answer any questions aspirants may have regarding what happens to the liberated one upon death, upon the shedding of the body. but it is also instruction about what is absolutely real even now. That existence, which is one without a second, which cannot be described as nothing, for it is real, and cannot be described as all, where there is no differentiation or multiplicity in it, is Brahman. Brahman is realized in the non-objective nature, in the non-objective knowledge of the self.
in What Are the Wise Established? He says in I Am Brahman and I Am None Else. Brahman is the only existence. By inquiry to know your true nature, realize it as the self in a state of utmost identity. I am Brahman. In Brahman, for Brahman, there can be no possibility of all or something or of nothing or any other idea. In self-knowledge, Brahman comprehends itself. Hence, I am Brahman and I am none else. One's very being is, the, is this knowledge. It is without birth and without death, without beginning, without end. It is characterized by an utter absence of differentiation. Not the least trace of individuality is there. I am Brahman and I am none else. Such is the Videha Mukta. Such is yourself and the knowledge of the self. So the inquiry that you just stepped us through on the certainty of where that object or non-object comes from. So it's very, I don't know, I just felt like that's a very a deep discrimination to be able to inquire like that. Um, however, most of the time, I mean, that seems like it deals at the root, right? I mean, it's like, oh, this is real? Where, you know, where is that certainty coming from? Because it comes from somewhere. So it's, I could, it just seemed like, oh yeah, this goes right to removing the object is real, and point to what is real. If the objectifying tendency is abandoned, 
the reality is self-evident. When you feel some object is real, it is there. What actually is occurring? The object is not declaring its own reality. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that would be, it. I mean, although it's assumed somehow that the object is declaring it, because it can stay on its own. But can it? Can it stand up apart from the existence of the self? <laughs> no. Because deep sleep is totally gone. I mean, all practical purposes doesn't exist. All right. So what happens to the certainty that it was there? That so-called certainty evaporates, doesn't it? Something remains that is without doubt. Yeah, it hasn't changed. <laughs> That's the my point thing. It is immutable existence. And that is what you are. The ideas of something and nothing are for someone. Who is he? If his individuality vanishes upon inquiry because it is not real, what happens to the objectified portion, the nothing and the something, etc.? Yeah, that's uh, depend, very dependent on him, that one. So it is with the entirety of illusion. Should we go on to verse 10? Ribu says, he does not remember himself in the least, anywhere, at any time. He who remains in his natural state is the Vidaha Mukta. He does not remember himself in the least, anywhere, at any time. By making reference to anywhere at any time, 
There's a hint that this book is for the living. And not a description of the dead. For even now our real being is bodiless. Or we may take it to mean that the remembrance of any place, of any time, is not there for him. How much of what you regard as your identity and what is real is built up in memory? All of the memories are for the position of the individual or the ego. Ribu says he does not remember himself. If there is no memory of oneself, there is certainly no memory of any other, either. How do you lose such remembrance? Giving yourself a amnesia will not do the trick. That's not what he means. You would cease to recall how you assume yourself to be the individual, the ego entity. This would be loss of remembrance that he's speaking of. The verse concludes with, he who remains in his natural state is the Vidaha Mukta. What is the natural state? It must be innate. For what comes and goes is not actually natural to you. What does not come and go? What is it that's unborn and imperishable? What is it that is actually you and never otherwise? Such alone is natural. What is it that can neither be attained nor lost, which neither appears nor disappears?
which is timelessly the same. That in which ignorance is impossible, and along with it, bondage and suffering, is your natural state. It is only being, only consciousness, only bliss. Supreme peace, perfectly full happiness, such is the natural state. And if you think you are parted from it, even for a moment, you immediately desire it most ardently. But what is natural is actually forever undivided. To abide in the natural state, inquire profoundly, who am I? And know yourself. Verse 11, he has no thoughts of, I am the self, another is the self, or I am the self, which is consciousness. He abides in the knowledge that I alone remain, such is the Videha Mukta. A thought of the self is not the self, it's just a thought. What actually is the self? That which is indicated by the statement I am the self, another is the self, should be realized. But the words and corresponding thoughts turn back unable to grasp it. Proceed by pure knowledge, non-conceptual knowledge. The thought, I am the self, is not the experience of I am the self. The thought consciousness is not the consciousness itself. What is the consciousness itself?
when all that can be negated is negated, what remains? What remains is that in which being is knowing. When all that is not I is abandoned, what remains truly of the I? This is the knowledge of which he is speaking. The knowledge that I alone remain is the common essence of both Vidaha Mukta, one liberated in the disembodied state, and the Jivan Mukta, one liberated while alive. There is no difference in liberation, no phases or stages. The supposed onlooker sees life and death, but the boundary between those two is utterly dissolved and liberated. Meditate on your eternal existence. Om Namah Shivaya.